been doing interviews all day? No, you're the first one today. I'm the first one. Okay, yeah. so you're pretty fresh then, I guess. Well, we'll we'll, we'll determine that after we get into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Blackie, uh, I guess uh, Wasp uh, has been your kind of solo project now the last years, but uh, now that Chris Holmes is, is back again, I guess you consider yourself as, as a band again? Correct. Um, how did you decide to, to get together again, you and, and Chris? Well, I did about a year and a half ago, I did a promotional tour over here, and I was I was really missing doing a show, and every day after I got finished doing the interviews, I kept hearing the same thing from the journalists over and over again. I said, Blackie, please do a show again, please do a show again. And like, you hear that once or twice, and you don't think much of it, but when you hear it every day, every day, you start thinking to yourself, you know, God, you know, are, these guys must be bored to death because there's nothing going on in the music world. Well, what the journalists didn't realize is that I was at a point where that's the push that I needed to, to get me going. So I went back to, to America, and this was in August of 95, and within a week of getting back, I called Chris and I told him, I said, you know, I think it's time to do this again. The vibe just seems really right. The rumors said that you were far away from, from being friends when you, you split. Is that true? No, it wasn't that. It was just, you know, you wake up one day and somebody's just not there anymore. You know, so we never fought. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chris and I rarely ever had words with each other, you know, like harsh words with each other. You know, it's like, I mean, I've known him since 1978. I mean, we've been together almost 20 years now. You know, I mean, we, we met when we were 18 years old, you know, so it's like we go back a really long way, but we had very, very few arguments. And even when he he left, we didn't argue. He just, you know, we just, we talked one day and we knew it was going to be over. To be honest with you, it, the biggest thing that happened between us was Lita, Lita Ford. And that's really what caused the split. I mean, she ended up being our Yoko Ono. Uh, you also brought along uh, two new members for the band. Who are those guys? Well, Stet Halland, who played with me on the Crimson Idol and Still Not Black Enough, really isn't new. You know, so I mean, he, and he toured with me during the during the Crimson Idol, so he's not really a new guy. He's been here what six years now. Okay. You know, so, but uh, the 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 new guy that we have is the bass player. His name is Mike Duda. Did you ever consider to, to gather the original lineup for a Wasp to uh, to make a real comeback? Well, Tony Richards, who's the original drummer, is no longer playing music. And uh, Randy Piper, the original guitar player, is from the last we heard, is is doing something different now. So you know, it's it would have been almost impossible to do that. Uh, you written all the songs with uh, Chris. Uh, what was it like to to come together after uh, this uh, period apart? To to to. It was exactly the same as it was when I talked to him on the phone. I mean, I hadn't spoke to him in six years, and I was really nervous about calling him. And I finally got a hold of him, and it was like, we spoke for like 30 minutes, and it was like I hadn't talked to him for a day. You know, I mean, it was, we just picked up right where we left off. The writing process was exactly the same. You know, it was like, you know, we just, the last record that him and I did together was Ahead Those Children. We picked up pretty much where we left off. You know, it's like, Headless was a record that uh, started an evolutionary process for us. And it's, it continues now, even as we speak. So it really, um, it, it wasn't, it, there, there was nothing that we had to overcome to do it. It just, him and I know each other so well. I've been with him longer than anyone on this earth. And the same for him with me. He's been with me longer than anybody else. I mean, I, I know him better than the two wives he's had put together, you know, I mean, I know him really well. And so for him and I to get back together, it's, it, and to write together, it was, it was very natural again. Hmm. Did you write many tracks for the album? Uh, we wrote for eight months and we kept, kept it a secret for a long time. We didn't want people to know that we were working together 
because we knew when it come time to make the announcement that uh, there wouldn't be any any surprise to it if we told people that you know we had been working together earlier. I mean, we we had to lie to people for a long time, you know, because friends of ours would call us up and they'd say, "Are you guys working together again?" And I go, "Nope." You know, and it's like you know, a week could go by, same person would call back, and they go, "You're sure you're not working together?" And I go, "Nope." You know, so we had to lie for a long time, but in that whole time, we were writing. Like I said, that took almost a year to write this thing to get it just where we were. But it wasn't just writing the album. You know, it was figuring out what we wanted the band to look like, what we wanted it to sound like, what the stage show was going to be, everything, because. The first week we were together, the one one absolute conclusion that we came to was we did not want this to be a trip down memory lane. If we were going to come back and do this again, if this was going to be Wasp in the 90s, we were going to have to be the nastiest, the stinkiest, the most filthiest band on this planet, you know, because that's what people are going to expect from, from Wasp. Mm. So we knew that... We, we knew what we had to do. And so it took, like I said, about a year to put it all together to figure out what we wanted to do. And then we started recording the album after that. How do you feel about the album now that you finished it? Uh, is this uh, Old Wasp with a more modern sound? Well, that's what I would like to think, you know, but some people, I mean, we like to think that we have captured the spirit and the, the vibe of the first Wasp album with a more modern production. And it's funny, we've gotten two reactions to this record so far. People who have been fans for like maybe five or six years, they say this is the best Wasp record ever. But people who have been fans for like since the beginning from like the old days, you know, with Animal and the first Wasp album, they all, they kind of raise their eyebrows a little bit, you know, because the production is different than what they expected. And I don't know what they were expecting. You know, I, I think that they were maybe expecting a wild child or something like that, you know, and it's like, we did that already. If Wasp were going to come back and be a contemporary band of the 90s, we have to evolve. There have been bands that have played with this industrial sound, but I don't know of a, of a truly heavy band that has done this. This record is part of that evolution process that I was talking about from where Headless started. So Wasp have been a band that have constantly evolved musically, and there's no need for us to stop that now. You know, um, So I think with a lot of the old-time fans, they're finding it to be surprising, but I would like to think that it's what you just said that it was. You know, It's capturing the spirit of, of the early band, but modernizing the sound of what we're doing. Uh, will you sound like this live as well? And also when you, you play the old songs, will they sound... Uh, the old songs sound like the old songs, and the new songs sound like the new songs. Okay, sounds great. So, uh, you, get, you know, we're hoping that when people hear this record, even the old-time fans, it grows on them. You know, because that's what... I'll tell you how it, how it started, was Chris and I were writing, like I said, and that, that went on for about the first eight months, And Chris was playing with a drum machine. And every few days he'd come over to my house and he'd say, listen, you know, he'd have new ideas and he'd say, listen to this, you know. And it was pretty radical, the stuff. I mean, I wasn't used to that kind of stuff. And I thought, I don't know about this. This is pretty pretty out there, you know. It, it doesn't really sound like Wasp. But the more I listened to it, the more I started getting into it. And it started growing on me. And I thought, yes, this is radical. This is where we need to go. And... I'm hoping that the old-time fans feel the same way, but whether they do or they don't, what we're hoping is that when we play live, that there'll be enough of the old material there to satisfy them with the new material mixed in with it. So, But, you know, only time will tell. I've just uh, heard the album a couple of times by now, but uh, I guess some of the lyrics, or well, at least some of, some of the titles, remind me of uh, Animal, I Fuck Like a Beast. Mm -hmm. Is this to, to, to gain some attention? Well, this is a far more serious album. This is the most serious and most aggressive record we've ever made. I think probably at first glance, looking at the song titles, they may appear to be like Animal, 
But upon further examination, you'll discover that this is a far, far more serious record than that. I mean, this is this is a vicious record. I mean, a song like <clears throat> well, "Kill Fuck Die" came from from the finale, which is the the last song is called "The Horror," and "The Horror" was inspired by the movie "Apocalypse Now," and specifically in "Apocalypse," where Marlon Brando is telling Martin Sheen. And when they're at the in the cave at the end of the movie, and Marlon Brando is explaining to him what that what true insanity is, and so the horror was inspired by that, and out of the horror came these three little words that said "kill, fuck, die." Sounded good, but it didn't really have a meaning. And so I liked the phrase, but I didn't know what to do with it. So we said, okay. We've got a good idea. Let's let's rework this, and we'll write another song that had that ended up becoming a spinoff, and that became the which now the the title track. But still, when I was writing the lyrics, "Kill Fuck Die" had no meaning. So I worked on it, and I worked on it, and I worked on it, and then I came up with this line that said, "That's all you get from life. Kill Fuck Die. That's all you get from life." And when I did that, I went, yes, thank you. I now have an anthem for the 90s. So that is how that came about. A song like My Tortured Eyes, which was an idea that Chris had. He had read somewhere that, um, well, Chris and I had just come out of bad relationships. And he, Chris was reading somewhere that suicide was the ultimate revenge to, to get on an ex-lover because they had then have to live with it the rest of their lives, you know, and I, I thought, well, that's an interesting idea, you know, because not that either one of us were suicidal, but because we had both come out of those bad relationships, we thought, you know, we were in the frame of mind for revenge, you know, so it's, a, and the whole record deals with that, this, this kind of stuff. So it's far and away a much, much more serious record than probably anything we've ever done. You mentioned that uh, your show on stage will be pretty raw as well. With, mm -hmm. Will it be rawer than it was in the 80s? Oh, yeah, because when I said earlier that we did not want to take a trip down memory lane, it's the same thing with um, with a stage show. You know, we felt that if a movie like The Exorcist scared people 20 years ago, it won't scare them now. Same thing with a Wasp show of 12 years ago. It won't scare people now. So if we're going to come back and we're going to do this, we have to push the theatrics further than it's ever gone before. I mean, we feel that there is not one truly dangerous band out there. And a dangerous band is a band who strikes fear in the hearts of local religious organizations, local governments, national governments, promoters, record companies, parents. You know, so if we're going to be that band, those are the things that we have to do. And that's the spirit of rock and roll. Uh, do you remember the uh, incident in the Drammen Salon where you, you, they didn't allow you to, to support Our Maiden because of the show you used to have? I remember it well. Uh, do you think that will happen again now in the, the 90s? I don't know. You know, only time will tell. You know, it's, um, but I do know this, is that we, are not, we did not get back together to be a safe band. So it's almost like deja vu all over again. Uh, have you been doing any gigs uh, after you got together? Yeah, we did four in America, and we've done seven over here because uh, this is just you know what we're doing right now was basically uh, you know it was a, a promotional tour where we played some live shows. It was like a pep rally, you know, just to get the press excited and everything. And the tour actually will start in uh, in April, I believe. We start April twentieth, and we'll come over here and we're going to do a couple of months over here and then go back to America. Okay, has the album been released yet? Uh, it's released here March 24th and I believe April 1st in America. Okay. On these uh, promotional gigs you were talking about, did you bring along this uh, new stage show? Oh, yes. You did? <laughs> well, what you should do if you haven't read anything about it, get on the internet and start reading what, what's been, what the people are saying there. This is far and away the most outrageous show we've ever done. I mean, I kill a live pig on the stage. I cut his head off. Woo. We've got this cross that's about uh, oh it's about four meters high it's huge it comes out and there's a nun that's crucified on it I, I 
my cod piece, I've got this long blade that comes out of it, and I fuck her to death with this blade, and I reach up inside of her, and I pull the baby. There's a fetus up inside of her. I pull the fetus out, and I, and I put it on the end of the blade. I mean, this is, this is far more intense than anything we've ever done before. Okay, and if we're lucky, we'll see this in, in Norway later, I guess. Uh, if the government lets us in, we'll be there. <laughs> okay, one last question. Uh, all since WASP started out, uh, people have been discussing what does WASP stand for? You know, some people said white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, we are sexual perverts, we are Satan's people and all that stuff. Uh, is there an answer to that or is it secret? Chris and I came up with a good one the other day. Somebody asked us as we were doing an interview. Chris goes... We ain't sure, pal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess that's... And I thought, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the only answer I'll get. The probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite track of all the album at the moment? Uh, my favorite track on the album right now is Little Death. <laughs> 